and started uh, an organization called Student Space Awareness, which was basically trying to figure out how to get Congress to listen to not kill the space station. And so our initial uh, plug, right when the internet started, we got a website which collected names, uh, location, what people did, and why they were interested in, in space missions. So first year, our student political arm, um, essentially, uh, we won by one vote not to kill the space station. Next year we went seven, next year it was 30, and then next year they instituted the bill and then immediately took it off, but they, uh, they kept funding for the space station. So that was just our small part of the student aspect. And then, it was pretty cool, yeah, I mean, we were stoked. I'm sure that Dan Golden, when he was in office, he was up there while we were up there. And so we heard of an organization called ProSpace, and their sort of other arm, the Space Frontier Foundation, which you'll hear Rick Tumlinson, he's on at 5 o'clock. Good, very, very great speaker. And he's not the political side of things, he's the cerebral side of things. Why we should be there, and why we should continue forward going into space. Uh, so, uh, leaving to ProSpace, ProSpace every year, I just actively uh, try and promote people to even just go to their website, but every March they have something called March Storm, and it's average citizens, you know, from students all the way up to people that are retired, to go to DC and basically uh, sit with their congressmen. And so we get about sometimes as much as 75 people to go, very grassroots. And essentially, we just go in with a, a small agenda. Nothing like, you know, we have these 15 items we want to do. Essentially, it's just uh, the first one is, is basically, you know, space is not a uh, government program. It's just a, a place that we should be going to, period. And so we look for things. Uh, one of the two of the bi biggest things that uh, limits us going is the fact that it's expensive. No matter what, it's expensive. And a lot of the stuff is long lead. I'm going to say long lead, like 15, 30 years before we might see something out of it. And so that's what we're trying to do is get Congress in that mentality and say, look, we're spending money, keep funding, you know, like sort of things that NASA's involved with. Um, future spacecraft, SpaceX is going to be, I think, the next people that launch us back to the moon, uh, my guess. And so uh, our goal is to get funding for that. So we're, you know, asking people to call their congressmen. And say go to the web, go to prospace.org, and there'll be an agenda that's there. And so you basically, when you call your congressman, you have some information in front of you to say, look, fund these specific bills. And those specific bills basically talk about um, I don't remember the exact number. It's 312 million for a certain um, bill, which will continue funding for like the space exits and stuff like that. So. Um, I highly encourage you when you get out of here or when you get home just to go and check them out, prospace.org. Um, the trips are awesome. Uh, it's like I said, just grassroots people going there. Uh, you sit with your congressman for five to 10 minutes. You'll sit with the legislative aides, which technically are the ones that are feeding the information to the congressman. And that's called ProStorm? ProSpace. March Storm is the, is, yeah, March Storm, it happens uh, it kind of, just depending on when budgets happen, is it's usually in the beginning of March. It could be the 10th or the 14th or whatever. But they'll, they'll have something go on. But, but um, uh, it is very, uh, very informative and very interesting to see the legislative process of how funding gets to some of these uh, events, like even Space Station or Next Generation Spacecraft. The, the congressmen sometimes have no idea when you walk in. You know, like they're like, why are we doing this? And so you, from the grassroots side of things, and why you're passionate about why you like space, you just explain to them. Like one guy walked in and said, look, I can explain anything. I'm an engineer. And one thing I can't explain is why basically you're not funding something. Why you're not giving funding to go back into space? And so the congressmen sometimes might not have an answer. Or it might make him think and go, geez, you know, that's that's really the correct way to do it. They'll go in and they'll vote, you know, and hopefully they vote towards these bills. But, but that's pretty much all I have. If you guys have any questions about, you know, pro space or anything else? Well, I, I kind of like your views on uh, what you know how to put it. And I guess it 
to put it in context, it kind of goes back to Webb and Apollo. Mm -hmm. uh, that probably in order to get political support and the fact that it was overwhelming the economy, and this is a NASA question, you know, put a little bit of work everywhere. And that seems to me to have kind of turned into uh, maybe it's one of the ways democracies work, but it seems as though it's kind of got a, some people call it a white collar entitlement mm -hmm. portion of NASA, and as opposed to other parts, the unmanned exploration part, which seems a little more focused. And that thing kind of seems to have a life of its own, and I don't really know how much support that has. And if you've seen several congressmen, maybe you've got some views on, you know, what things, what things ought to have more. I don't know how to explain I'll give you a perfect that. example of that. I mean, when you mentioned Apollo and stuff like that, when we went back to the moon, I, I can't remember the amount of people, but when we said we're going back to the moon, the amount of jobs that that created, not only just for the people that were just leaving college or the people that were already there, but it was such a boom to the economy to say, like, you know, look, it will be expensive, and it will. It always has been. Space is not an easy place to go to. And just, you know, it's not the snap of the finger or step through a transporter and you're somewhere else. It's super hard to get there. Long lead times on, say, equipment just to buy computers for, say, small spacecraft, take 15 months just to build it. That's not even conceptually, um, hey, we need this type of computer. Oh, well, we have to have this type of, you know, down to the, to the chip level. Just the con concept to design that, that's, that's not even that. It's just 15 months to build it. So the amount of jobs that President Obama or next person after that can generate just by saying, look, we're going back into space, we're going back to the moon, that will spur such a huge uh, uplift to the economy. That it's, it, it would be the best thing that any president can do um, from here on out. I mean, he always, always will say, oh, well, we don't have the money for it. It's cents on the dollar. I'm not even kidding. It's 1% of 1% of the, the HUD bill or HUD budget, which is like, I want to say 70 million or something like that. 70 billion? It's nothing. I mean, we're asking for like 17, I think we're asking for 17 billion and HUD gets about 70 billion. Some small, it's, it's such a small amount of money. I, like I said, I don't remember the exact numbers back when we were doing Space Station, but it was like nothing. Nothing. It's like a, everyone put a, a penny in, our entire nation put a penny in of their tax dollars. And that's all you're, all you're spending on the space program. So it's small. A small amount, but it's a good amount. It's it's money well spent. You know, and not even going back down to the you know the cell phones that we have, the smartphones we have, the computers we have, computers in our cars. You know, that stuff is all generated from space stuff, you know, space program design, and computer designs, and communications. Communications is huge. You have TDR satellites that are going, you know, sending stuff back and forth, information. But, I mean, back to the job spurring, I mean, that's one of the most important things. Even ProSpace promotes it left and right. You will spur huge amounts of people going into different industries and into your own states. And it, even though it might be, people might consider the nasty side of politics and stuff like that, that, oh, this is in my state, it still generates a lot of money, a lot of interest. So I hope that, that helped answer some of your questions. Yeah. You mentioned you work for Boeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so do I. Oh, cool. And um, well, a lot of the shuttle programs ended. And Very sad. Yeah, and a lot of people left um, just this week. And I'm just kind of curious, what's Boeing going to do about that? Being one of the leaders in aerospace, um, you know? Well, I... My head is not bloody yet, but <laughs> banging myself, you know, my head against the wall. Uh, uh, like you said, the the money is not there, and I'm hoping Boeing. Uh, uh, where do I go from here? Uh, we have a little craft called the X-37. I don't know if you've heard of that. Very neat little aircraft, spacecraft actually. I tested it in Mojave Desert, uh, so I was on on that part of the program, which was unclassified. 
there's a part of the program that is classified, which I at all can't talk here. Uh, but um, they're small steps. Now, X-37 is a great little craft. There's other crafts like uh, something called Dream, Dream Chaser. Um, Boeing's going after some of that work. But it's all small steps. There's nothing like, uh, there's nothing after uh, Space Station. So the goal, we lack, our nation, uh, in my opinion, lacks the national goal. What do we do with Space Station? Or what do we do after Space Station? And so there was talk today about you know the hotels in space, great idea. The spas in space, great idea. But there's no scientific aspects of that. In Boeing itself, they, they, you know there's stuff in the works. Our X-37 was just in St. Louis three months ago, right behind uh, the head of IDS, Integrated Defense Systems. And he basically said, look, this is really cool. Let's start investing in the space part of this, not wait for the government to do things, let's invest. And so it's still fresh and new. I'm hoping you know, stockholders are, that's the part of the stuff I don't like about the aerospace business is that stockholders just want their money. They, we make 50 billion, or they want the 49 billion, you know, whatever you know, they get in their, in their stockholder fund. Right? You guys have a CC dev? Correct, CC dev work is the, the, the third item that we're working on, CC dev, is Apollo on steroids. So it's basically taking Apollo, taking that, I'll say spam on the cam, it's not too sexy, but but uh, we have now newer technology, we have digital instead of analog, which still is not 100%, you know, digital still has issues. Analog, you flip a switch, that switch is flipped no matter what. Digital, which is zeros and ones, someone flips a bit, you might be sending a thruster somewhere. In any event, we have CC data, we have Potentially, we have uh, Sierra Nevada Corp, which is something called Dream Chaser, and that's a really wicked craft. Um, hopefully, uh, either Boeing will get it or someone else, but they'll do another um, drop test with it. And the concept there is to basically, you know, Vandenberg or Mojave Desert, uh, essentially take this little craft and bring it to 40,000 feet or so, see the aerodynamics, how it flies, and once we understand those characteristics, Strap it on the rocket, send it up in space with astronauts, and that's our now new crew vehicle. So all of that still takes money, and so talking to your congressman is the most important thing. So, so even the prospace aspect, go to prospace.org. Uh, calling your congressman if you want to do it monthly or bi-monthly, and saying, look, why aren't you funding this? Or hey, this is very important. Um, you know, I, I run the whole gamut. I call about you know, sharks. And sharks are very important, but it's nothing to do with space, but I'm constantly calling them, send them an email. You know, email's not as effective, but but you do get a response. Sometimes by phone you get a response. But, but I mean a response back, like, hey, thanks for the phone call, blah, blah, blah. Um, and usually you'll talk to someone directly, and say, if you call, you try and find out more information about who takes care of, say, NASA appropriations for who takes care of the space side of, of all your, um, say, information that you're gathering. And it's usually one specific intern. Usually it's interns or legislative aides take care of that. And that's the person you talk to because they have the ear of the congressman. So, so just, yeah, oh yeah. And, and, and I only found that out my first, uh, my first time there as a student. You know, because I'm like, all oh, you know, green as can be, I walk in, I want to speak to this congressman. And they're like, well, he's off on the floor. Well, I'm part of his district. I'd like to speak to him. And that's the only way you'll get to speak to an actual congressman if you actually in his district. But uh, they said, well, the congressman doesn't know much about this, but this yeah, legislative aid does. Oh, okay, that's the person I'm going to talk to then. So, and sometimes a congressman is up to speed. Like Congressman Weldon in Florida, he's highly up to speed on space stuff because it's he's, he's in the space coast. And it is very, I mean, it's very sad to see, like I came here and Downey I know was, you know, five orbiters were partially built here. And even in Huntington Beach they had Saturn V, which I'm like, that's like the, that's the creme de la creme of, creme of uh, rockets. And part of that was built in Huntington Beach. I'm like, oh, sweet. But here I come here and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of desolation. And I can only imagine what Florida's going to be. You know, and, that's, and that's tough. What part of uh, Boeing do you work in? Uh, space uh, um, space shuttle or? 
Somewhat. Uh, more one of the core groups. So I get to work on a bunch of different programs. Oh, sweet. Yeah. It's nice, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, it sounds like you're really making the push through the government side of things. Then. Well, um, it's really just I, trying to get that through. Yeah, well, you, you just try. It's like, yeah. you know, it's a handful of people. And it's and it's and it's been even in, in, in uh, college we met uh, one of the guys who's VP of space systems over in, in the Space Coast area. We just happened here they're having a, a meeting. So I joke all the time that here we were we're going to college and like one of the one things that people do in the middle of Florida is they're deciding the fate of the space station. I'm like oh man I want to be at that meeting. <laughs> so we drove up there we had no idea what we were expecting and we had no idea who we were going to meet and it literally was. Uh, McDonnell Douglas people, Cocoa Beach Chamber of Commerce, which you know all the businesses that are associated with that, and then it was like industry people, you know, and then all of a sudden we walked in and the guy from um, uh, McDonnell Douglas was like, he and Carol was in a room, he was just like, hey, I'm happy to see students, what do you guys have to bring to the table? Sat us in a room for an hour and we came up with just a, uh, uh, like I said, the web was really early at the time, and so we came up with just a forum and we decided to forum on the web and have people enter it and gather that information. And so it was far beyond what he even thought, and then he used that as a jumping point. So we walk into a congressman and we say, look, th these are people from your district. They all want space. And so that's how we got in the door. And you know, from that point on, that's how we continued on. And like I said, I bumped into pro space people. I was like, oh, sweet, I'm out of college now. <laughs> and hence, that's, you know. That was the next stepping stone. Of course, got my first job at, at Honeywell, and kind of drifted once I got into this program because it's a little tough to. I think it's a little tough sell when I'm like I'm on the, this side of it and I can't talk about what I do, but I'm like I'm pro <laughs> Yeah. So, but uh, they've waxed a little bit. At least we can talk a little bit about X37 projects, which is yeah. really neat. If you go online, you can go to spacenews.com or something, and find a little uh, information. Uh, is it the 37 or 39 that's forming a couple of times now? What do you mean? The one that landed at Vandenberg. Oh, that's X37. So there's yeah. a couple variants. X37 was Mojave. I'm sorry. Uh, X40 was Mojave. Um, Try Lake Bed somewhere east of that or something. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh, X37, which was Mojave again, and we uh, used Spaceship One, or uh, White Knight attached to it, took it to 40,000 feet, and then uh, you know, dropped it and got the characteristics of how to fly from 40,000 feet and land by itself. So that's the cool thing about this. Um, coolest thing about this is it's completely autonomous. So it knows where it is in sort of space. It knows where it has to go, and then it flies to the, to the um, but, but that is the one that the Air Force has flown twice now. Correct. Yeah. It's on YouTube too. The video. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Really? On YouTube. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful flight. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, and it's funny because they have some of the animation there. I'm like, how do they even get that? I'm like, I can't even show my wife. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? If it's on the internet, then yeah. I guess you can. Well, yeah. Certainly at work we can't. No, he no said I can't. I remember from my days, even if it's public knowledge, at least what you used to sign, you can't. Yeah, since well, since we've transitioned, um, oh, a part of what we've done, we've transitioned, and so we're on a different part of things, and so oh, we're now allowed to put it on our resumes and stuff like that. Strike me as kind of weird, but it's how it used to be. At least back when I was kidding, so. I had a roommate. I guess now, if it's on the internet, then it's okay to talk about. Is that, um, kind of, or well, I mean, not necessarily because there are some It's things okay that to talk there, about, but there are, you know, if someone starts really pressuring. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I literally will just have to get up and walk away because I can't, you know, I could just say yes or no. I can't even say yes or no. I'll be like, can't answer either way. Sorry. You know, if they really start to pressure, I'll leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got to go talk to this person now, so. Yeah, but there's a, the, the craft itself has a solar array which pops out and generates more than enough power to stay up there years if they wanted to. Now we're, we're, we're punching through, uh, we're almost done here. You're more than welcome to sit and we can chat, but. Uh, so there's technologies that we're trying to, to, to achieve, like you know what happens if we're up there for like five years and we now decide we want to land so we have a flat tire because it's not solid tires. Solid tires have weight, you know, that means 
its different characteristics when it's, you know, when it's up there. And so all these things we're trying to punch through and we're trying to figure out. So, And that's what I mean. So from 10 years from now, we might come up with some technology that we can use for manned you know, man flight, or even during what we're doing. But it takes money. It takes Congress, unfortunately, to say, you know, hey, we'll give you $300 million, or we'll give you a billion dollars, you know, whatever it is, to help assist in that breakthrough. And they're, they're starting to do that. They started to take money away right now, actually. NASA, they were given X millions of dollars, and they said, oh, sorry. Budget's really bad this year. We're going to take like, two thirds of that away. And so, even if they funded it at current levels today for this, you know, the, the ideas of um, SpaceX and stuff like that, NASA is just is like, well, now we got to cut programs because that technology was great, but we can't fund five of them. We can only fund two. And so that's that's by calling your congressman and saying, look, fund this. I think it's very important, and a lot of people keep doing that. Late Congress up to, to really uh, start, you know, start thinking about it. It's not a lot of money. I mean, it's not a lot of our tax dollars, but but uh, uh, it's money well spent, at least in my opinion. Are you making any push on the Boeing side to go a little commercial with the space? Um, there is there is portions of that, and 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 like I said, it just comes down to um, it comes down to McNerney, I guess is is the leader of IBS. He uh, he wants to invest in it, but it's you know stockholders going, dude, we want our money. I mean that's literally that's the unfortunate yeah, side of yeah. you know when you have a big corporation and and uh, I had some I only have pamphlets for me if I if I had other questions, but uh, the people that make the money, the jobs that spur money are like the SpaceX people. Those guys have just a yearning to go there and they want to do it. And so they're going to hire more people. They're going to, you know, they're going to invest in that company. And of course, once it gets big, someone else might buy them out. But, you know, they're the ones that spur the jobs. Boeing will have its own, you know, sort of job creation, but but they're a very large company. And our bread, our bread winner is definitely not space. Now. No, now. right, correct. I agree. <laughs> I agree. That's why I'm like. Now, I'm but let's look for the future. <laughs> I like agree. You said. I agree. And, I mean, seven eight seven. That makes our money. Once that hits, boom. I see the company a lot, a lot happier times. Oh yeah, yeah. Seven eight seven. I mean, I can talk about that too. That is a gorgeous plane. Yeah, I just saw it in Oshkosh. Oh. You guys, did you guys go to Oshkosh at all? Or? Yeah, I did. I just oh, saw it. Yeah, gorgeous. I mean, just some of the cool things they have on it are just amazing. Like you touch the, have you seen any of it? You touch the window and it turns black? No. Yeah, you touch the window at, a, at like a point on the window, and there's like these little piezoelectric things that just orient the, the, the metal that's inside, and it oh. whoosh, goes black. Really? That's yeah, instead so of like awesome. no pulling down the you know the slides anymore. And blue lighting, like they, they figured, I guess they had some people come in and say, how can I get oh. better mood lighting and stuff like that when you're on an airplane? Well, uh, fabulous, the Boeing blue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But they also did like a composite, which is really neat. Aluminum, over time, does this, you know, as you're uh, decompressing well, and compressing, right? It's supposed to give a better, higher pressure difference. Right, so it's like atmosphere. like me, it'll travel better, and it can also have uh, higher humidity. So you may have to uh, it was beat up. Uh, right, yeah, so it has now humidity on there, so you don't, you know, you're not corroding the interior, which they do have right. corrosive stuff to right. protect it. But but uh, composite now, you can sit there and do this all day. It's not gonna, it's not gonna stress it. And so you have a higher atmospheric pressure inside. You feel more refreshed when you walk off the plane. Yeah, that's what we think. Right. One of the things I always got a kick out of at Boeing. I don't know if it's the same way up at Everett. They got a way pressure tank with every series fuselage, and they were well, recycling them to try to keep 50% ahead of the highest strain one in the fleet. Yeah, so 77, it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Anyway, that's it. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah.